that mountain Save my heart from the valley Maybe that desert taught me to pray for rain Maybe that water never bought it for a reason And you're leading me a better way Working hard Trying to prove, earn my way back to you. I fix my faults, right my wrongs. Make sure it looks like I belong. But then you speak something new. I recognize what is true. It's not about what I can do. Cause all that really matters to you. I can finally see it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart, after my heart Before I was breathing, before my heart was believing Yeah, you were there from the start, right from the start, yeah And now it's clear that you will never leave Over and over, you keep coming for me I can finally see it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart, after my heart, yeah What you want is all I need Every piece of everything I'd lose it all, I'd lay it down Cause surrendering is how I'm found But then you speak, it's something new I recognize what is true It's not about what I can do Cause all that really matters to you, yeah. I can finally see it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart, after my heart Before I was breathing, before my heart was believing Yeah, you were there from the start, right from the start, yeah And now it's clear that you will never leave Over and over, you keep coming for me I can finally see it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart, after my heart, yeah See it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart After my heart Before I was breathing, before my heart was believing Yeah, you were there from the start Right from the start And now it's clear that you will never leave Over and over, you keep coming for me I can finally see it now, I can finally feel it Yeah, you've been after my heart After my heart, yeah You've been after my heart da 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 Good use of the boards for leveling things. It's perfect shims. It's perfect. I'm just trying to make sure that you guys Nice. Some of the weird things over there. This feels weirdly like more technology than we own. Yeah. <laughs> it's strange to see so much in the bush. Right. It's kind like of a, a clash weird... of our worlds. Yeah. It's, it's like one part of your life meeting the other part of yeah. your life in a way. It's exactly. true. Exactly. Yeah. First time you guys have had cameras in here? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, this a... kind of doesn't, thing doesn't happen very often <laughs> out here. <laughs> Not that I'm like not used to gear and all that. Not uh, yeah. many film crews in the bush. Yeah. Uh, my, my name, name is. is <laughs> oh, I thought we were doing it together. Uh, my name is Sydney Hildebrandt, um, and I help the color by doing their merch, merch and lobby stuff. I don't remember what my title is. I don't know Hold if you've ever given. Can a I title. do it again? Lobby manager. Lobby manager. Jordan. <laughs> That's my title. <laughs> 
<laughs> I oversee everything that happens in the lobby. Okay, I got it. My okay. name is Ryan Hildebrandt, and I'm the uh, sound tech um, for the color. Good job. Okay, can I, can I do mine again? Good. Is that Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> you could do it again, but I'm absolutely going to cut in the last one. It was, it was just so perfect. Okay, okay perfect. Okay. Yeah. We met at working, we were both working at Winkler Bible Camp. Um, and we, there's a bunch of other friends, but we were kind of the two that uh, didn't necessarily want to watch the movies and everyone was hanging inside and uh, we found each other just, why don't we do something outside? Mm. And so we, it was just <laughs> us because everyone else wanted to be inside <laughs> and we wanted to be outside. So <laughs> that uh, things kind of just went from there. I got kind of involved in music and sound um, at my church, just leading worship for youth and a few things. And then uh, I got involved, uh, just someone asked me to, if they could fill in for them doing sound. And uh, I uh, just said, yeah, we should probably know what you're doing back here anyway, you know. Um, so I learned that and kind of got a quick rundown and then uh, I just kind of transitioned to doing it because no one else could make it anymore or whatever and uh, so then I got to know Larry through uh, some of that and some worship teams and uh, I knew uh, James and Jordan from a few other things just some of the music stuff around town and uh, one day they called me up and needed an extra hand on tour like for the next day right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I got about uh, 25 hours heads up to the first tour of the color uh, but thankfully I was kind of in between jobs and I had nothing else up and uh, I said yes and <laughs> things have just grown and gone further ever since. I guess it was just such a, I guess I was kind of excited and uh, maybe nervous and I was uh, sick for the first few days or whatever, like <laughs> driving and traveling, but uh, it was, uh, that's a long time, long time ago, but uh, it was really cool to see, um, I think I was just blown away at, uh, the, you know, one of those things like, how did this like happen? <laughs> like the mesh of me getting to tour along with a band doing music stuff. Um, and, and like serving in, in ministry and like, it was really cool to, you know, kind of a miracle of like, <laughs> you know, I said yes to, um, you know, helping at my church for a while. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get to kind of do the cool thing and go on tour with the band. It was kind of like a miracle of just like God giving you the, you know, even more, uh, immeasurably more than I could have asked or imagine, you know, at that time. Um, yeah. The big, the big draw for me is I get to mix uh, music, which I love and is a part of my life, and also my uh, faith in getting to share the gospel with others. Yeah. So we wake up, usually me and Jordan are kind of the first ones who kind of go walk through the venue and just kind of get the layout of it and, you know, learn who was who and where everything needed to go. Um, and then we would load in, so it helped with that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I oversaw kind of everything that happens in the lobby. So all the like setting up all the merch stuff and the World Vision and all of that stuff. Um, so I would usually do that all morning. And then the afternoons I would take time to do the work that I, like my actual work um, that I brought along with me, I'd do that in the afternoon. And then after supper would be kind of training all the volunteers to run. Like I didn't actually run all of those tables, we just had volunteers who would run everything. Um, so kind of training everyone to run everything and then just being around in case something <laughs> something went wrong and needed fixing. So yeah, and then all the tear down and stuff at the end. And it was neat. I mean, I guess kind of maybe one of my favorite parts of that would be like with the World Vision table is kind of cool just to like understand that a little bit more. So it's really cool. Like a lot of the times, like not every night, but like maybe every second night, like the person volunteering to run the World Vision table would end up sponsoring a kid because like. They're like, well, I'm telling people about this all evening. Like, okay, of course I have to do something. So that was a really cool, yeah, kind of to see that like behind the scenes part of it and just get to explain that part of it to people and yeah. In my heart, meet me here, draw me near. This is my prayer. In my home, 
every day Rule and reign Lord have your way Every moment I'm living And every breath that I'm giving Let it be love that fills my soul Yeah, your job on the road is electricity and flashing lights and loud music and rock and roll. And then out here, it's... Crickets. Peaceful. Yeah. So we are in our outdoor kitchen area behind our yurt. Um, so we live in a yurt in southern Manitoba in the bush, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, we moved here in October, so almost a year. Um, we're completely off grid. And yeah, I don't know, love everything about it. <laughs> so we moved in October, so we haven't quite done a full year, but we moved in kind of right before winter and then experienced the winter, which was not too crazy, obviously, because it was a pretty mild winter, but had some cold stretches to like see if it would work and it works. So we stayed warm and toasty and didn't run out of wood, which was great. The last couple summers, not I guess the last two or so, but we used to do, um, uh, be involved with a, a traveling day camp. Um, so we, and a few other things, but we've been gone uh, for a lot of the summer. So we just decided to sublet our apartment. Uh, we were hardly there anyway. We were just there on the weekends. And uh, we had just recently bought a camper van. And so we just decided to live in the van for the summer. Mm. And uh, it worked so good and we liked it. And mm. it was really rewarding. And we just decided to to keep moving out in spring and move back in fall. And so we'd spend uh, most of spring, summer, and part of fall in the camper van. Oh, so tell, tell it's me about beautiful. It. Right. it has an eagle decal on the side. Uh -huh. It's black. 
Um, it's like a like a conversion van unit, so it's not like just a sprinter van or whatever. Right. But yeah, so it's like a kind of old, classy-looking camper van. You guys are it's so good. like resourceful. Like I come out here, and I see what you've like built, <laughs> and it's amazing. Like what what drives you to like want to live this lifestyle? Mm. Like what's the motivator? Right. Hmm. Probably just like being like taking care of what God's given us and like right. that's kind of like the first command given in the Bible, right? Is to like take care of this land. Um, so obviously there's more things to whatever, more things to it, but yeah. it's kind of one of the basic things we boil it down to is like we feel thing, kind yeah. of called to this is our responsibility to yeah. steward our resources well and not be wasteful of things and yeah, use what we have and and care for what's around us. Yeah. It gives us a lot of joy just being outside and yeah, um, yeah, being in the creation as well, mm. is with the Creator. Or... When I'm down to a whisper and it's all I can give, any prayer I can muster won't fall on deaf ears. When I'm faced with the mountain and my hopes were thin. Any faith I can gather changes everything. When I call upon the Lord, all His promises will stand. He will make a way like only He can. I surrender my control and I leave it in His hands. He will make a way like only he can, only He can. Every stronghold will come up, even death stands no chance. My God won't be defeated, and nothing holds Him back. My God won't be defeated, and nothing holds Him back. Working wonders, only He can Take the captive, set them free Heal the broken, only He can Light the darkness, split the seas Working wonders, only He can Take the captive, set them free Heal the broken, only He can Yeah, when I call upon the Lord All His promises Seas will stand to hell and spoke your name into the night 
And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living home. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of angels stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Clash of yeah. you know the two worlds, <laughs> but it's it's great. It's, it's funny. Yeah. yeah, it's weird to have so much gear and technology around, but yeah, it, uh, it, it's a weird clash of both worlds. And right, and it, yeah, I think if it can like even just make people like 
obviously not all move into an off-grid yurt, but like, right. you know, <clears throat> reassess like what's a way that I can take some responsibility for for creation or what's mm. a way that I can unplug or simplify something in my life. Like, right. that'd be kind of cool, right? Like to yeah. kind of bring that to other people of, you know, what's something you could do that's really simple. That would make life more simple. <laughs> Composting toilets? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> practical ways to uh, love the earth that the Lord's given us. What are some practical ways that you guys do that? I think the biggest ones after we're out here would be, like, I'd say, like, a composting toilet. Like, right. everyone can do that. Um, you know, grab a bucket and get a setup going and find some sawdust and. Um, most, I think, places would let you do like a, a compost pile out back, you know, in your yard, even in town. Yeah. And uh, that way you're saving clean water. And uh, and again, like what we said before, like you're actually benefiting from it. Like you're putting in the work of, of taking that extra step of caring and then you actually get compost for your yard after that. So like it's kind of a cool like reward for doing that. All right. It's, it's not waste it's a resource right yeah and kind of a way to look at it right. which is what a lot of people say i guess but right yeah. um we don't have any running water so we haul our, all of our water in and uh we just have a like a foot foot pump to uh like you know wash your hands and right. fill up the sink that kind of thing right. so it's shocking sometimes like if we haven't been in town for a few days and like when you do the foot pump like you don't get a lot of water out and like you're kind of in control of how much water and then it's you're enough. like go to like wash your hands in town and you open the tap and it's just like a flood of water and you're like whoa it's like, like whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. stop <laughs> sucking stop. that's as much water as i use in a week washing my hands at home so like yeah. we want to save water then like you know right yeah. don't use it don't right. use clean water right. when you go to the bathroom don't right use more than you need when you're washing your hands and that kind yeah. of thing and, and the foot pump yeah it's a weird <laughs> super easy way to use a tiny little bit right it's kind of our luxury but, item too because like if right. you're cooking or like you're cutting up like chicken or something and your hands are all dirty like you don't have to touch the top like, and hands free hands free <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah it's our luxury yeah, yeah being out here it's, it's kind of a mash of like yeah we're not you know just like go out into the bush and avoid the world right just trying to find a balance i guess between it like right. you know we obviously need relationships and people and um, you know a lot of technology is great like you know it's very handy to be able to you know video chat with someone or flick a right. light and have light and you know there's so many things like that where I don't know what's the balance of it right like uh, yeah it's such a large <laughs> topic of like what's right. the best and um, in a lot of ways I guess yeah we've we've lost some of the beauty of what God maybe wants to give us and we've, you know, I think there's a verse in the Bible that says, like, we've kind of pierced ourselves with a lot of transgressions by trying to go after something else in, in a different way. So part of us being out here is, you know, kind of trying to reclaim and find a little bit of that and just, you know, follow his heart back to the bush a little bit. And then the other part is, you know, you can still find the beauty in a lot of things no matter where you are and whether, you know, there's cameras and cords or trees and bushes, you know, but um, having worked together is, is interesting. Right. But I mean, it's a good, a good mix and balance because here there's a lot to do <laughs> and it is pretty yeah. busy and it's not always like just relaxing right. we and don't, peaceful. We don't sit in the hammock swing all day, every day. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to get into the hammock swing, but uh, and it's yeah. still very fulfilling and rewarding. But. Um, in a lot of ways, I, I guess. We weren't out here, kind of when we were touring a, a lot, but right. coming home and, you know, we'd still, we, would, we weren't out here, but we'd spend a lot of time hiking and out in the bush and or in the van, just kind of chilling somewhere. And those times, like, definitely refreshed me to go on tour the next time. Um, other people find their rest in other ways, I guess, but, yeah. We have a poster inside that we had, I got it years ago, it was like a postcard I got like when I bought something online. But So we put it up in the van and now we put it up in the yurt and it says go your own way. And it's kind of like, we're gonna go this way and do our thing, but like, 
I'm not saying I want everyone to sell all their stuff and move into an off-grid yurt. Like, I don't think that's solving anything, but like, right. find your way and you go your way. I'm gonna go my way. And like, that's gonna be so much more beautiful than if we all try to go the same way, whether, right, whatever way that is, like everyone has their own way they need to go. What is the why? Why do I do what I do? Whether I'm on tour or wherever I am. I would say like, some days, like even on tour, like it does definitely just feel like, okay, we have to get up and do the thing. And like, <laughs> even at, like, we know that's the heart of it is the ministry. There, that's not to say that uh, it always feels like, you know, big God moment, moments, big ministry moments. It does sometimes just feel like, have to set the banner up again today. It's like 6 a.m. in an airport. Right, right yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you can like, yeah, I feel like usually, at some point during the day on tour, like during the evening when the concert is happening, like there's usually a moment of like, oh yeah, this is why we did the things again, right? Like this is why, this is why we're here. And like, yeah. it's cool to like kind of have a lot of those reminders and like, yeah, just interacting with all this, like the Christian body across Canada is like mm. what a beautiful, beautiful thing to get to see, right? Like all across Canada, people are trying to do this walk and like, not everyone gets to see that, right? Like you have, you know, your little, your bubble of Christian friends and family at home and like your church family at home, but like to get to see it all across the country is like, wow, this is like, this is much bigger than, it's been real cool. than me and my little church at home. And yeah, it's really beautiful. <laughs> Look at this star hung in the sky. Who put them there? Who gives them light? No ocean deep could hold his grace. Follow his lead, and he'll make a way. He broke the fall and he rose from the grave. He changed it all in a matter of days. No matter how great the problem we face. We gotta remember, he stays the same When you just can't face tomorrow When you're down deep in the sorrow When your faith is on the edge Don't be afraid to step Cause even if you fail to fly He'll catch you by surprise He'll catch you by surprise Don't be afraid Stand on your feet His hands of love Hold everything All that we know Can comprehend His perfect will His perfect plan When you just can't face tomorrow